Good afternoon, everybody. How are you doing? Uh, it is time again to fly some plane. Um, I have attempted to brief at least my takeoff procedures, and I will be briefing the uh, landing procedures while in flight. Hey, thank you so much for that button and for giving me a uh, an emote as well. well. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Thank you so much, uh, Microsoft Sam, for, or Amy, or whatever the, the uh, version of it for Microsoft is, with email voice, whatever we use. Uh, thank you for reading that woo with such a plum. So, I didn't reset my uptime. Oh well! We'll have to live with that today. So our uptime is going to be significantly deviated. We're actually at 6 minutes and 10 seconds. So we'll just take two and a half hours, or two hours, 20 minutes-ish. Two hours, 24 minutes. That's what, that's what we need to take off. Two hours, 24 minutes off of that time. Uh, I apologize for that. It probably won't. I'll try and fix it. Um, we definitely won't. Uh, let's stop this. See if we can't fix it. <laughs> if that'll work. Hey! It's working! Don't ask me how, don't ask me why, I do not know. Alright, so. We are going to be flying planes today. We are flying from Denver to Kansas City International. Um, should be about an hour and 37 minute flight. Um, <clears throat> which should be fun. Uh, it should be right in our wheelhouse. So speaking of wheelhouse, let's get in ours, shall we? This is the uh, Tolis Airbus A319 KG. Yes, we are going to KG Airport. Um, so let's go ahead and get this bad boy started. Uh, I don't have anything new with it today. Uh, I've been trying to be able to pl fly the A320. However, for some reason, it just seems to freeze up the stream. I, I don't know why. Uh, all I can say is that it do. So, uh, let's get the A319 started. I mean, its operation is pretty much the same. It's not that big of a difference. All right, so external power is on. Fuel pumps are all off. Uh, fuel load. Okay, so for that, I need to peek real quick at my flight. So our fuel today is going to be 65, 66. So I'm going to go ahead and go with 66, 6.6 6 tons. So we need to go to our Tolis ISCS and loading. We're going to be at 66. And then our loading, we have 132 passengers today with 1.2 tons of cargo. Perfect. Drop that back down. We don't need it until we're done with the uh, pre-flight procedure. All right, so fuel pumps all off, fuel loaded, APU fire test. Hope you guys can hear that ding and that ding it means that our fire test is completed successfully. Uh, APU master switch on. We need to wait for a flap open on our upper ECAM or lower ECAM. Turn up our brightnesses, get our cockpit configured while we're waiting. Should be about time for my flap open message to appear down here. There we are. Start the APU. And... All right, there we go. Set up our McDo's. Yes, I know we don't have a GPS primary. All right, 
right, that's Lighting and Mikdu's flap levers match the E-cam. The E-cam will tell us that we are fully retracted. The flaps lever is fully retracted. Speed brake should be fully retracted, and they are. Probe and window heat should be on automatic, which it is. Uh, APU bleed when available should come on. Air conditioning panel should show no white. Uh, cross bleed valve should be set to auto. Go ahead and turn on that APU bleed. Uh, air conditioner temperature as required. We're not really going to worry about that. Generator 1 and 2 fault light should be on. And they are. External power off. Uh, electrical, electrical panel, all other lights off, and ventilation panel, all lights off. That is preliminary pre-flight procedures complete. Go through our pre-flight procedures, adheres all to nav. Strobe light set to auto. Uh, wing lights. On, nav and logo to system one. Seat belts on, no smoking to auto, emergency exit lights armed. Landing elevation set auto, uh, pack flow as required, which today we have 132 passengers, so we will need normal, which is what we have. Uh, fuel pumps all on, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, radios three, two, and one. On, on. There you go. Good compute. All right. And now we're to McDo configuration. Pardon me. All right. So this is the part where I got to open up my flight plan again. I apologize. I'm going to be out of contact for just a few minutes while I set this up. All right, so we are flying from Kden to AMCI. Flight number is Frontier 330. This is a real world flight, although in the real world it is flown on an A320, not an A319. Cost index today is five, like it is every day. And our cruise flight level should be 370. And pull our wind. <clears throat> All right. Uh, that's data initialization flight plan. We are departing runway 34 right. Via the Emmy, but you got Emmy's five. Get the flight planning window for the. Uh, do we have RBA for it? That's going to take us Nugs, High Def, Barstow. Gas, Sniper, Emmys, Circle. Perfect. All right. Then we're going to arrive AMCI, ILS 1, left. Via RBA. No via. And for our transition, I think we're L10. Mm, we don't have it. Very flight. That gives us RBA, Judah, Peggy, Huggy. Okay. So this is where it doesn't know quite what to do. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and insert this.
Then we're going to switch this to plan, and we're going to have to put in some stuff manually. Okay, so between RBA, circle and RPA, RBA is pretty. Okay, so that fixes that. And we got RBA, Judah, Peggy, Huggy. And that's where we start having issues. So here we're going to go Elton. JC. Hoover. And Jersey. Oh, come on. Okay, you know what? Cooney, Jisun. Let's do this. Let's do Misser. And Jisa. All right. That should get us what we need. Yeah, perfect. That looks like exactly what I have planned here. Okay. What are you yelling at me about? Yes, thank you. I know people are going live on Twitch. I'm one of them. <laughs> okay. So. Next is secondary flight plan, which we're just going to copy the active because I don't actually have a secondary flight plan. Now we need to do init B. Oh, chill fuel prediction. Okay. Hold up. Wait, this is the right screen. I'm sorry. I'm losing I'm losing it, guys. It's been a while since I've flown, can you tell? Alright, zero fuel weight is going to be 55.2 tons with a 25.7 center of gravity. And our block fuel is going to be 66.6 tons. Hey Bard, thank you so much for that host. I appreciate it so much. Hey. Throw that out there. I think he's going to actually be uh, streaming tonight, if I remember correctly. All right. That's a nit B. Next is performance. So we are going to take a flaps three departure, I think. No, wait. Should be fine with a flaps two. All right. So V1 should be one, five, one knots. The rotate is also one five one. V two is one five four. Flap setting is going to be two slash up zero point nine. Flex temp is forty six. And then we're going to show our 
distance to KM's eye. Get you over to flight plan. All right, that's our McDo's set up and configured. All right, next thing up on our list, that's preliminary, that's pre-flight procedures complete. Next is pushback and start. Let's go ahead and get our local weather. It'll be on 122.2 for ATIS. This is Denver INTL Information Whiskey. 2220 Zulu. Visibility 10. Temperature 30. Dew point 6. Line 340 at 8. Altimeter 301. Advise you have information whiskey. End of information whiskey. This is Denver INTL information whiskey. 2221 Zulu. Visibility 10. Temperature 30. Dew point 6. Line 340 at 8. Altimeter 301. Advise you have information right. whiskey. That gets End us. of information whiskey. Hey, double this check your ICL information with Metar 3010 Temperature 30 Dew point 6 Line 340 at 8 That's right because the uh, Advise you have information whiskey End of information The automated whiskey. reader doesn't realize that this in this case the uh, trailing zero is actually important 19 perfect all right so next altimeter is set f the fcu flight director both on which they are it's these little green dots here uh fcu speed to managed mode heading to managed mode and fcu altitude set to atc cleared our initial clearance is going to be to 10,000 feet. Perfect. All right. Auto skid and nose wheel steering on. Twitching panel all normal. Transponder set squawk. We're not really going to worry about our squawk today. Uh, turn our beacon on and then we can plan our pushback. So we're gonna push back this way and rotate tail left. Ground to cockpit. Plan acknowledged. Call me through the menu when you are ready. All right, and we are in fact already ready. Ground to cockpit. Toe is driving up. All right, engine start. Oh, pardon me. Yeah, we got through the pushback and start procedures. Let's go to the start engine start procedures as soon as he's ready to push us. As soon as he's done driving directly through the uh, scenery here. That's got to be fun, right? Go ahead and lift us up, sir. I go ahead and turn on our weather so they don't forget. Absolutely will. Okay, all doors and hatches are closed. Ready to connect. You can see there uh, they put the steering disconnect. dome lights off. They're not really necessary. Pass these enunciator lights. Everything looks good. I really should have done that earlier. So connected and bypassed and inserted. Release parking brake. Release parking brake, yes sir. Starting pushback. And you may start engines. All right, engine to ignition mode, engine to start. 
Gonna wait for 25% into rotation. Gonna introduce fuel at about 20%. And here comes fuel. 25% starting engine one. You hear the PTU bark if you're really paying attention. Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. And here comes fuel. 25% ignition to normal AP bleed off ground spoilers armed flap set for takeoff pitch trim set for takeoff that's going to be up 0 0.9 Engine and wing anti-ice, APU master off. We're into taxi procedures. Now we're gonna go to taxi for today. Uh, Bravo November, Foxtrot. Operation Fox complete, uh, parking, break. parking break. That parking brake. Disconnecting tow. Stand by. All right. Thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, if you're new, go ahead and hit that follow button. Uh, that will let you know when I go live. I do this every Tuesday from 5 to 7 p.m. Central. Um, you'll see a countdown down below the stream. I also try to do Wednesday and Friday doing more gamey type stuff. Uh, lately, it's been Trials of Mana. Although, um... So it's disconnected. I'm bypassed and has been removed. Hand signal on the left. We'll see you next left. time and have a safe flight. Um, lately, I've had some trouble making that one. But I'm, I'm hoping to get back into the habit uh, because I do want to provide you guys with the maximum amount of, um, of enjoyment that I can for your viewing dollar. Of course, he's going to stop behind this. However, I think when he jumps out, he'll be, yeah, just on the other side. Okay, cool. So let's turn our nose wheel light to taxi. Uh, parking brake off, elapsed time run. Hey, thank you so much for that follow, Scootalio. I appreciate that so, so much, and I hope that you enjoy the streams as well. Full left, full right, full up, full down. That is flight control check. Brake pressures look good. Uh, FMA should be at nav and climb. Uh, auto brake set max. Terrain on ND as required. Let's go ahead and turn it on because we are on top of a mountain pretty much. We're at a couple thousand feet. Uh, we call our cabin crew, make sure it's clear. TO config test, ECAM no blue. All right, so let's get this bird off the ground, shall we? We're going to take, uh, right now we're on uh, Bravo November. We're going to take Bravo November to Foxtrot, Foxtrot 1, to get on to runway 3, 4, right. That does mean we will have to cross Golf. Axiway Golf, which should be right up here. Yeah, there's golf, box drive.
Hopefully we shouldn't be too far away from Foxtrot 1. Uh, our pro we, we are just continuing from where we left off last week. And apparently where I decided to park, right where I needed to be for this stream. Um, so we were already parked just right next to the runway. Slow it down a bit. After all, we don't want to spook the passengers too much. And that'll be Foxtrot 1. Now I have actually seen, uh, in simulator, mind you, where an actual airline pilot got into a, uh, a land race in a 737 because they were flying on uh, Vatsim and there was somebody who was trying to leave at the same time that they were. <clears throat> However, we try to keep our taxi uh, below 20, I want to say like 25 knots. I think procedures is under 30. But I would rather keep my passengers a little more uh, secure feeling. All right, this is Foxtrot 1 onto runway 34 right. All right, transponder T-A-R-A. Temperature check. Looks fine. Engine mode as required. Runway turnoff lights on. Landing lights on. Nose light to take off. All right, chrono start. Engine throttles to 50%. Stabilize. Flex. Nose down. Maintain center line. Our speed is alive. Hundred knots. that back pressure. D1, rotate. Positive rate, gear up. Flaps one. Go ahead and turn on the autopilot since it's got that intercept properly programmed. Lever to climb. All right. Uh, let's see. Landing gear is up. Ground spoilers disarm. Let's turn off our runway turnoff and nose wheel lights. 
Autopilot is on. Thrust lever is to the climb to tent. Uh, or pardon me, to the, uh... Yeah, climb to tent. Pardon me. Uh, flaps should be retracted when I can. That'll be at 200 knots. Uh, engine mode normal. Engine anti-ice is not needed. Landing lights will be off at 10,000 feet. Sure. Uh, coming up to 200 knots. Almost. I... Go ahead and retract those slots now. We will stall. <clears throat> 200 knot speed checked. Flaps zero. Alright. When we hit 10,000 feet, we can take off the landing lights. And then we are currently heading for high def. Let me go ahead and get my chart open here. Alright, so we are just passing Nugs on our way to high def. At high def, we need to be at or below 10,000, which it looks like we will be fine for. And then, oh, sudden downpour. Nice. Once we hit high def here, we can uh, increase our light limit to 12,000. And after that, 230 until 10 minutes after departure. So currently we're at altitude star. So now it's holding that 10,000 foot altitude. Got about five miles left and then we'll be able to knock that uh, altitude constraint up to 12,000. Go ahead and show constraints. See, yeah, there. Under 10,000. Then we're going to turn right to heading 098. Head for Barstow. Once again, thank you everybody for being here. I do appreciate it. And I hope you enjoy the content that I'm making here. If there's anything that you want to know about the airplane, about the route, about um, aviation in general, I will do my best to answer it. I can't promise to answer everything because I am not a real life pilot. Just want to make that clear. I'm not a real life pilot. I would like to be at some point. It is a very expensive, um, it's a very expensive career to get into. Uh, so let's go ahead and knock ourselves up to 12,000. And we're back into climb with our throttle at climb. But yeah, if you, if you ask in chat, I will do my best to answer. I do have a fair amount of knowledge about the 319. I have gotten some tips and pointers from an actual 3, 8, uh, 320 pilot. Um, yes, I am aware that Thrustmaster recently put out the TCA uh, licensed by Airbus stick and uh, will soon be coming out, I think in September, with the throttle quadrant. Unfortunately, I do not have access to that. Um, I'm not a very big content creator, as you can probably tell. Um, I do hope to get there at some point. I do hope to buy the TCA. I think it's TCA. Maybe it's TCS. Um, but anyway, it's the, the, the Airbus family of controls. I would love to get them. Uh, especially since they are swappable. So you can, you can put it in such a way that the stick is designed to be flown left or right handed. Uh, so you can simulate being in either the pilot seat or the uh, or, or the uh, the captain or the first officer seat. I don't know why I said pilot. Because technically we're we're all pilots. All right, how far are we from Barstow? No, we're heading towards gas now, so we're past Barstow. Yes, which means we can go up to 230. 
All right, we are climbing again. We just need to make sure that we're at or above 14,000 at gas, which we absolutely will be, without question. Look at that climb profile. Holy crap. I mean, that's really only like an eight degree up pitch, but it feels like more than that, I'll tell you what. It feels more like a 15 degree to me. Just from the appearance. Let's look over our instruments real quick, make sure everything looks good. When we get to 18,000, we need to uh, set standard barometer. Yeah, see, we're already past 14,000. We're absolutely fine. Uh, we're also above 250 knots, which is what we really needed above uh, 10,000 here in uh, Denver. So then uh, 10 minutes after departure, which we're already to about nine minutes. So we'll probably be at Sniper. I thought I had a dead pixel on my brand new monitor. Turns out it's a dead bug on the back of the screen. <laughs> on the back of the screen? It's on the, so if it's on the back of the screen, why is it making it look like there's a dead pixel on the front? Or is it like in between the, the, the protective coating? I, I don't know. You know, I'm not even sure I'm gonna get up to flight level 230. I'm not sure, but it's showing through. Ugh. That's not good. All right, passing 18,000 feet. Is that standard barrow? <clears throat> All right, we don't really need terrain anymore. All right, 10 minutes after departure, we can go ahead up to 370. We are in open climb. Huh. You might have to wind up having somebody take the uh, cover off and uh, remove it that way. That's unfortunate. Um, I would definitely contact the manufacturer. All right, so let's go ahead and pull up information from KCI. What are we coming in KCI? If they went with the iCal codes, it wouldn't do that KG shit. All right, so we are stars. Okay, it's giving me, it's gonna give me help. Okay, flight planning. There's no RBA. Robinson four.
Yeah, I think it's Robinson. I'll give me P to Funny City. Okay. Funny City, Robinson, Judah, Peggy, Huggy. Okay. So we need to be we need to intercept Funny City at eight thousand. No. Nope. That is not correct at all. Okay. So we need to expect twelve thousand at Robins. Okay, so we're using the Pawnee City transition from over PWE Vortac to PWE Radial 115 and RBA Radial 296 to RBA Robinson VOR DME events. Uh, from over Robinson VOR DME to Robinson Radial 134 to Hubby. Then on heading 190. Uh, then expect that radar vectors to final. So yeah, and then Judah and Peggy are just on the way. Judah, Peggy, Huggy are all radio 137. What's Huggy? Alright, but it looks like we've got a little bit of time. Sorry about that. I had to go ahead and try uh, checking out my approach procedures. I should probably also look at the approach plates. Okay. So RNAV, runway 018. Our nav Z uh, runway one left. We're essentially coming in from Elton, Big Blue JC, Culver, Mr. Jersey, runway zero one left. Okay, so we need to be below 210 knots at JC. We need to be above 7,000 at L10. Let's... Wait. Yeah, that's above 7,000. Low 210. JC Culver Hoover. Who need Mr. Hmm, I've got G Sun instead of Jersey. But it should be funny. I think it's the same thing. I think it's just got a different name. So the MSA is going to be 3,100 uh, elevation. Airport elevation is 1027. Missed approach will be climbed to 2,000 and climbing left to 4,000. Direct bowler and hold. Okay. We'll intercept Jersey at 2600, which, yeah, okay, that's G Sun. Hey, Hater Ken. Thank you so much for that follow. I appreciate it so, so much, and I hope that you are enjoying the content. Um, if you have any questions about the stream, about the flights, about the aircraft, aviation, Anything, I'm happy to answer any and all questions that I am capable. Remember, I am not a real-world uh, pilot. Uh, I just play one on TV. 
uh, which I don't, because I don't actually do TV, I have a face for radio. So, um, if you have any questions, feel free, dump them in chat. Uh, I'll get to them just as soon as I can. Uh, we're still on our climb. We're going to be climbing to 370 today. Uh, and I can actually release the passengers. I don't know why I still had that on. Probably because my procedures don't tell me to turn it off. But that's because it's pilot discretion whenever I feel that it's okay. And you know what? I just wanted my pilots, my, my passengers to be super, super safe today. Um, that was what I was going for, is to be safe. So, yeah. That's the story I'm taking, and I'm going to stick to it. Please feel free to call the FAA and complain that I didn't let you out of your seats. Um... So it looks like we've got an ETA of about 0.50 UTC. It's currently 23.20, uh, pardon me, uh, 22.51. At camp. Maybe that's just our estimated time on route, not our estimated time of arrival. At least I hope so. Um... Because we are way closer than that. We should be about halfway there. Put our map. Are oh, we're not halfway there. We're not close to halfway. There. That might actually be right. I guess we've only been in the air 24 minutes. Of We're supposed to have like an hour... I want to say it was an hour and 47 minutes? This flight was actually flown a couple of days ago by Frontier Airlines, which is what we're simulating today. Uh, however, they generally do it in an A320. Unfortunately, every time I try to load the A320, it freezes up on the stream, and I don't know why. It still works perfectly fine for me, but on stream, all you see is just me looking out the cockpit. Um, if I pull up the uh, MCDU, forget about it. Everything gets locked. And I didn't think that that would be a entertaining stream for you guys. So instead we're going to do this in the A319 by Tolis. We're playing an X-Plane 11 because uh, the real world has curved runways. And uh, both, and I think both um, FSX and P3D do not. I'm not entirely sure on P3D, but P3D is a lot more expensive. Frontier, that's what I flew the first time I went to, Ke to Keiichi. Um, all kinds of delays and cancellations. You know, I've, but see, I've flown Frontier as well when I went to, ironically, when I went to Denver and back. Never had a problem. I don't think that so much had to do... So, the first time you flew to KCI, there was some very, very inclement weather. And it's not really fair to blame Frontier for delays and cancellations when the weather, inclement weather, is a deciding factor. You know, it's not the airline's fault that there was massive storms. And believe me, I was waiting there at the airport. Those storms were not safe to land in. Having, having simulated landings in similar conditions, I, if you actually looked at my past VODs, um, I had a landing in very similar conditions to what you had that year. And, um, I, I couldn't do it. I wound up having to have the plane auto land itself. And even that was really, really rough. It was, it was something like 600 feet per minute landing rate. It was really bad. Um... So, I, I think from that, you could very well have gotten injuries. So, I don't think you really wanted that. Um, I think they made the right call to divert. Um, and, of course, any diversion is going to involve delays. Um, I don't remember exactly where they diverted to. I think it was Minneapolis? Which is only, like, an hour flight. But... Um, you know, they had to wait for the weather to clear. You know, there, there was nothing that they could do. 
Milwaukee. That's it. Um, how far away is Milwaukee? <laughs> Let's see. Let me look at... Let me look at... No, not KMCO. I. Ah, <sighs> everything wants to go through Kord. But I can't say for sure. Uh, not without getting more into it than I can really get while I'm streaming. Uh, so I don't know exactly how long that flight would be. But, um, but yeah, it's definitely safer than trying to land in those conditions. So I'm glad that they waved off and decided to, to divert. That was, that was a good call on their behalf. And the thing you also have to remember is that um, if conditions are bad on the ground, they are much worse at altitude. All right, we have reached cruise altitude. And we have set our speed to Mach. We are flying at Mach 0.75. Uh, 75% of the speed of sound. Um, now, people might wonder why a subsonic aircraft, the only real uh, limitation on it is that it can't fly supersonic. Well, why don't we fly right up to like 99% of the speed of sound? Well, the reason for that is because not all air is flowing over the aircraft at the same speed. So, uh, or different parts of the aircraft, I should say. So, uh, for instance, on the wing, it's designed aerodynamically to make the air flow faster over the top of the wing than the bottom. So technically speaking, part of the aircraft is going supersonic when the aircraft is at 99% of the speed of sound. And what that means is what will happen is the air, it basically impacts the leading edge of the wing and creates a cushion of air that makes this this air start superheating and compressing and that causes the the def essentially the air curves around itself instead of around the wing so when there's no air running over the the surface of the wing you get no lift you get no lift you fall out of the sky right so that's why you can't fly supersonic in a subsonic aircraft, but it's also why you can't fly too close to supersonic in a subsonic aircraft. And that's why we fly so high, because it changes the, uh, the speed that sound travels. It, it changes what um, Mach 1 would be. At lower altitudes, Mach 1 is actually much, much lower. But up at altitude, it's much higher because the density of air is much small. It is much lower. We don't have to worry about overspeed, uh, what's called an uh, uh, overspeed stall. Go ahead and get a flyby. That crab angle, what are we flying against? Woo! 30 knot quartering tailwind. That's probably at least 26 knots of, of straight crosswind. Quite a ways to go. Wow.
So, how's everybody doing this afternoon? Um, I'd like to hear from you guys what's going on. What's going on in your neck of the woods? Um, other than surprise rain showers. And bugs in the, uh, in the system. Now, I apologize if you get to hear the, uh, the police or ambulance, whatever it is, it's coming. Thankfully, they're not coming to pull us over in the middle of the sky. And a black cat demanding attention. Don't let her fall asleep, otherwise you're, you're going to be covered in drool. You will be covered in jewel, jewel. And that's less than I feel. Just finishing out my work day, something I meant to say before, I was actually looking into ATC. A good thing that you can probably do, um, other than just you know, applying to ATC positions and seeing if you can get into it. Um, you can also try getting on networks like PauseCon or uh, PauseCon, Pilot Edge, or um, I, I hesitate to suggest um, VATSIM, but it does exist, Mimi as it is and uh, kind of get yourself a feel for how it works and, and what it feels like to control uh, that airspace. And it might give you a better idea whether that's something you want to seriously pursue. And I say that not as somebody who's been in ATC. I'm, I'm not in ATC. I have, I've, I've done all office work. Um, so take that with a grain of salt. But I would suggest that it would, it would give you an idea what a day in the life of a controller is like. But that is a super cool uh, thing to be going for, and um, I'd love to hear more about your path and what you've done so far to get there. Um, if you have any, any family history of, of being in ATC. From what I understand, they're actually going to be doing a lot of hiring here soon because um, there's a bunch of people that have been quitting as, you know, COVID-19 has knocked down a lot of the flights in the United States. A lot of people got laid off, so you're not dealing with so much seniority. Um, I'm honestly not sure I could hang. Really, I just spent some time looking into it. I came to the conclusion fairly early that I wouldn't be able to handle the pressure. I can understand that. Um, ATC makes a mistake and people's lives are at risk. Um, I don't think anybody can really judge anybody for, for not being able to hang with that crowd. Um, I think that it'd be a fun job I think if I got past the... And, and understand that at first, uh, you go through months of, of training where you're not controlling actual aircraft. Uh, you'll be handling uh, situations that are brought up that, that are actually from real-life ATC communications, but they'll be reenacted with, um, with dummy pilots and with dummy screens. And you'll be communicating with a... Uh, with a senior trainee that will be playing the role of the pilot, right? So, and and you don't start out in high pressure air zones. Like you, you don't start out controlling um, Chicago. You don't start out controlling, you know, uh, SeaTac. You don't start controlling New York. You'll start controlling something much, much smaller with a low fly-through, mostly just following GA craft, is probably where you wind up starting, and then they'll move you through the different categories. They have categories of airspace, um, and not just the categories like Bravo class airspace, things like that. I, what I mean is, you've got Vortex that are more and less busy, and they have them categorized 
I think there's like five different categories and they start you out at the lowest one and then as you became prof become proficient and you have a couple of years experience in that kind of a vortex they'll bump you up and let you start getting your feet wet in something that's a little bit bigger a little more busy so if that might you know change what you feel about possibly becoming an air traffic controller um I have watched a lot of, of information on these. Um, I've watched some documentaries on uh, people controlling heavy airspace and light airspace, what the procedures for becoming a controller are, um, and seen some of the situations that they're, uh, that they're put through and how they're um, trained. So, because I was actually looking at it too at one point. Um, I decided not to go after it Probably for the same reason as you, um, but it's also, it's just difficult to get into, and it's a government job, which I'm not really sure, like, I was looking into this maybe three months before the start of COVID-19, so it didn't really, um, it wasn't really going to be something that's, I was looking to get into at that point in time. Um, it just seemed like, it seems like a really cool uh, way to get in if I can't be a pilot. Been a few years ago. Yeah, there was some changes. Um, I want to say two years ago. And I'm sure that there will be more changes now with... Uh, uh, well, maybe not with ATC. There definitely will be in the airline industry as a whole. Or COVID-19 protections. But I don't think that's really a concern for ATC. <clears throat> unless you're controlling like a runway uh, like if you're if you're handling arrivals then that might be an issue um, because there might be some special procedures to go through if a plane is coming down like there, there's there's a uh, COVID threat on board there may be some procedures that you have to do but uh but yeah, I wouldn't necessarily throw it out just yet. You know, um, you might you might find that you actually do want to do it. At which point, go for it. But if if it's not for you, that's fine too. Um, yeah, that um, I think it'd be really cool to find out whether or not, you know where you wind up going. Like, if you do decide to go that route, let us know. Um, because I think that would be that would be really cool to to hook to LG. Brand new monitor needs to go in for repair. Oof! Is that because of the bug? Yeah, I think that would be really cool to 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 get into. Um, and if you do wind up getting into ATC. Uh, I'd love to keep up with you and just find out what your what your path looks like to you. Um, yeah because they're not gonna want you to take off that front panel so are they are they directing you to someplace locally or are you having to mail it in ship it maybe one of these days if a career change looks like it's in the cards again sure uh, it seems unlikely okay maybe there's some universe out there where I went for it you know Multiverse theory says if it's possible, then it's done in one of the multiverses. So, you know what? There is one out there. As far as I'm concerned. Um, if it is possible for you to have done it, then there is a world in which you did it. And even if you don't get into it as a career, you could always still look into doing it on something like Vatsim or Pilot Edge or Poscon. Poscon's coming out. Um, actually, right now they're doing beta. Uh, uh, they're doing a closed alpha test on uh, their ATC system. Uh, currently, they've got a closed alpha going on for ATC and a closed beta going on for flights. Uh, so you can live a piece of that of, of, of that life by joining one of these networks and and becoming rated as a controller on them. Um, 
that's kind of what I'm doing here, right? Like, I'm, I, I don't think that I could get a job as a pilot, but you know what I can do? I can fly a A319, a, what, $25 million aircraft? I could, uh, or 250? I'm not sure. It, it's a very expensive aircraft, and I can fly it for free. Well, I paid like $60, $70 to, to buy the aircraft from Tolis, and I just spent like 60 bucks on X-Plane. Um, I think another 20 on XP Realistic. But yeah, um, that's kind of how I'm living it, is I'm simulating it. Maybe one day I'll be able to have like a like a full simulator. I think I'll build myself a room that is just one big simulator. That would that's the dream. Let me tell you, that's the dream for me. Just because I love the idea of flight. I just I hate GA. I think I think that airliners are so much easier to fly than GA. Like you can look at my past vods. There was a there was a vod maybe three or four weeks ago where um, I was flying, in, flying into Vertical Sims, uh, I want to say it's Green State, and I got there early, so I just, but not early enough to do another flight, but I decided to just screw around in, in, a, in a little GA, in, in I think it was a G1000, the, the Cessna 172 G1000, and let me tell you, I could not keep that thing straight to save my life. I cannot figure out the uh, the GPS on it. I can't figure out the, uh, the the autopilot. I like the airline. Yeah, it is surprising because it, the thing is, here's the here's the thing. It's not it's not about just being able to fly the plane straight. If I just needed to fly the plane straight, I could fly the plane straight. The problem is, is that even very very small winds deflect a C-172 like it's paper. So, the C-172, it's such a light aircraft that any wind can just throw it around. And I'm not used to that, you know? I'm used to flying a multi-ton airplane. I'm used to flying some of the zero fuel weight of, like, 55 tons. So, it's going to take a pretty significant wind to really blow me off course, to, to buffet me around like that. Um, but all of a sudden I'm in this tiny little 172 and I just, the wind is blowing and I just can't, I, I, without rudder pedals, it's also much, much harder. I don't have rudder pedals. Uh, I do plan on getting those, but I haven't been able to get them yet. So I'm having to control rudder deflection with the, uh, Z axis rotation on my throttle, or not on my throttle, on my uh, stick. And that makes it very difficult for me to hold my Y and, and X axis where I want them. And that's kind of why I would like to get the Thrustmaster TCS, the, the Airbus version. It's got a Z axis lock on it that prevents you from rotating in the Z axis. Um, but that would still leave the problem of I need some kind of rudder pedals. Which I would love to have the Thrustmaster Pendulars. I am a big fan of Thrustmaster. What I'm using now is Thrustmaster. It's not a great Thrustmaster. I'm using the, the T-Flight X. Or T-Flight Hotus X. Um, it's not ideal. I don't like it. But it's better than other options that were in its class. me. But yeah, um, I just, I, I don't speak GA. Um, it's too light. And I haven't spent a lot of time in it. I can say that too. I haven't spent a lot of time in GA. And that, that has a lot to do with my inability to fly it reliably.
I probably could if I were to really apply myself and spend as many hours flying GA as I have uh, in this. I mean, to give you an example, let me pull up and see how many hours I have in X-Plane. Uh, looks like I have about 229 hours. I'd be, I'd be inclined to practice it more since I'd be more likely to give that a try one day. I should. Um, I just have a love for the tube liners. And right now I'm learning, uh, I'm learning navigation mostly, right? And general, like how to make the plane work. Um, being able to get a feel for flying, that's going to be different from plane to plane, but like the precepts of how to get the plane started, uh, how aviation works, how navigation works, those are all things that aren't going to, to, to change significantly from platform to platform. And again, maybe being less likely to fly the commercial craft might make one favor them in The Sims. Right. I could see if I when I when I want to learn GA, I can go to a flight club and pay to fly a Cessna, right? And they will they and 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 you know go to a flight school and they will professionally teach me how to start the Cessna, how, you know what the procedures are, and teach me how to handle things on my own, right? Um. With commercial aircraft, I will never get to fly an A319. I mean, that's just... I've, I've made peace with that. I will never fly an A319. I will never fly a Boeing 730. I want to, but I never will. I might at some point be able to fly something as sophisticated as, say, a Cirrus Vision or a... Uh, what is it? Cessna Citation? Like, I may, I may be able to actually fly a jet, but not an airliner. So that's always going to make me favor something like that. I also, in in GA, I, I don't like single-engine GA because you have to deal with the uh, torque, right? Because the propeller spins one way, so it makes your, your, your plane want to spin one way. So you have to constantly be deflecting it back. And that's something that I'm, I'm not a huge fan of. So uh, if I was going to fly something, it'd have to be like a King Air or um, one of the one of the dual engine Cessnas. Like, what is it, a 207? I gotta look that up. Let me look that up real quick. Nope, that, that Skywagon is still single engine. one is Cessna 421 and it's only three hundred and sixty thousand dollars so yeah um let's see can I get my descent wins yet All right, so we're going to need to come down to... Come on. Tablet. Here we go. Let's see, where's my pro Robinson? Okay, so I'm going to need to intersect Robinson at exactly 12,000. Let's go ahead and dial that in. I'm not gonna press yet. Actually, let's go down to 230. So I'm gonna go to 22 for Pawnee City.
Let's see here. Flight plan. Dude, it's saying 292 for Pawnee City. And we definitely need to be below that. Because we need to expect at or below that level 230. 36,000 only? I'll get you one for Christmas. And <laughs> I would love if you would do that. But I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think that's in the cards. Let's go ahead and go down. Alright, so let's get our weather. This is Kansas City INTL Information X-Ray. 2321 Zulu. Visibility 10. Temperature 27. Dew point 12. Line 340 at 9. Altimeter 2993. Advise you have information X-ray. End of information X-ray. This is Kansas City INTL information X-ray. 2321. All right. Thank you very much, Kansas City International Information X-ray. Don't laugh, it could happen. Yeah, and I could get a 10 without burning the summer. <laughs> oh. That will never happen. I think we all know that. We need to be... There we go. Now everything seems to be coming back in order. One of the things that I love about flying Airbus... Think of it, visitors... Visitors of the stream, my wife, the all-Canadian white Irish girl with red hair disappearing in the sun because she's so pale, burning to a crisp blink of an eye. Yeah, if my wife goes outside in the sunshine she comes back in looking like Wendy's bacon and not the the good it's just a little brown but like the uh, why is that still so red bacon like I don't know how Wendy's does it when you cook bacon bacon turns brown but for some reason Wendy's can make burned bacon that's still red. I'm not sure how they manage that. But somehow they do. Yes, clack, 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 clack. Um, yeah, we are in our descent procedures. Landing elevation set auto. McDo arrivals is completed. McDo performance approach is completed. Uh, top of descent winds, which is still being a pain. Yeah, it just doesn't want to. Yeah, it doesn't want to. Oh well. Am I supposed to be descending? Yes, I am supposed to be descending. I need to be at two three, flight level 230 by uh, PWE here, by Pawnee City. <clears throat> you are descending to flight level 220, which is below 230 of Pawnee City. And then we'll need to come down to 12,000 for um, Robinson. Actually, we can go ahead and go straight down to 12,000. Yeah. Yeah, I'm totally descending. It doesn't look like it on my VSI here. I have like maybe a one, per one degree um, up orientation, but because of my throttle setting, 
I'm currently descending. I'm just gliding. That's why you can see my throttle is at idle. So we are just gliding to the ground at this point. For the most part. I mean, there will be some constraints on here that will probably have to... Uh, have to calm down for. We need to get to Peggy at 12,000. Um, Buggy needs to be at 210 knots. The Elton we need to be at or above 7,000. that looks like we are straight up see here's the issue we need to be at Robinson at flight level 120 there we go Huggy doesn't seem to have any constraints and then Elton has at or above 7,000 Oh, it's saying because of my current speed restrict or uh, altitude restriction. For some reason, I was thinking that this was telling me that I was currently instructing it to fly to flight level two three zero. But when it's in magenta, there it means it's it's stopping there because of an altitude restriction. And that's why it's also in magenta here. So we are uh, on descent into Kansas City International. We are coming in via the uh, Robinson Two or Robinson Four arrival. Double check. Uh, yeah, Robinson Four, and we're using RNAV Zulu One Left for our approach. Right now, we're still on the Robinson 4 at Pawnee City. And we'll have 42 miles to ditch down to 12,000. And it looks like we're back on our descent path. Perfect. See, I love, I love the Airbus. It just automatically calculates where we're supposed to be before we were too high. Now we're bang on again. Um, we might be a little low, but that's fine. It'll make that up, no problem. Especially when we hit this speed, this altitude restriction at 230. Then the descent will slow until we cross Pawnee City. And then we'll have to hold 12,000 between Robinson and uh, Peggy. And we'll have to slow down to 210 knots. Let's see, what's it expecting for speed? 210 knots at. Okay, so we're. Where's that speed restraint coming in? 210 is at Huggy. Perfect. 
Okay, so we're going to be flying 240 until Huggy, and that's when we will start our deceleration. Well, that's where we're finish our deceleration. Okay, and under 230, we are before Honey City, so we are doing perfect. Now we're going to continue descending once we get past Honey City. So don't go anywhere. This is actually the fun part. It's also the part where I'm a little um, more heavily taxed. Right? Because this is where it gets interesting. Um, approach is the hardest part of the flight. It requires the most amount of attention. So unfortunately, I won't be able to spend as much time on chat as I have been. But hopefully you guys still enjoy what's going on and uh, get to see me hopefully not crash. I have crashed on stream before. I will probably do it again. Hopefully today is not that day. We do have a little bit of weather in the area. Nothing terribly bad. Weather radar down a bit. Because we are descending. <clears throat> Into altitude, set and push. Break half as required, not needed. Altimeter set Q and H. I can go ahead and set that now. Let's go ahead and recheck it just to make sure. This is Kansas City INTL information X ray. 2332 Zulu. Visibility 10. Temperature 27. Dew point 12. Line 340 at 9. Altimeter 2993. Advise you have information X ray. End of information X ray. This is Kansas City INTL information X ray. 2333 Zulu. Visibility 10. Temperature. 1014 all right and now we are bang on our descent profile seem to be a little faster than anticipated my plan and we should be at 239 now. And we're at 250. Well, what's our true airspeed? 331. We're definitely a little fast, but that's fine. We're not, we're not bad. Landing lights will come on at 10,000 feet and the data can be on constraints, which I already have it. I'm going to go ahead and flip that over to showing airports. Uh, landing system as required. We won't get that until we are really deep, until we're, we are in our arrival pattern. Or into our approach pattern. Runway length is going to be 10,601 feet. Plenty of room to stop, so we're only going to need auto brake low. Go ahead and get that out of the way. So we're going to be flying at one, two, zero for a while.
That's going to be from Robinson to Peggy. And then we'll come down to... Seven thousand? Yeah, we'll come down to seven thousand after Huggy. Or Huggy. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the content. Um, let me know if there's anything that you think I could do. Um, hit up the Discord if you have suggestions for flights, because if, if you tell me in chat, I will absolutely forget them. And I don't want to forget them. I think I do have another set of flights planned for the rest of the month. Um, I think we're going Dublin to London Luton. And then London Luton to Frankfurt. We're going to be in Europe next week. Hopefully that'll be fun. Um, I have a little more trouble with um, with European routing. Um, mostly because the uh, one of one of the ways that I val validate my routings is I take a look at FlightAware, which is a United States tracker. It'll, it'll track anywhere in the world. Um, but it can only look up the filed flight plans for flights that are terminating in the United States. So, um, in Europe, I don't have that to double check. All right, speed out star hold. We're going to speed down a bit. Hope so. Should be at 239. But it looks like it's going to go to 230. Nah, okay. It's going to stop at 240. Two okay. Good plane. You're doing good things. And people like you. Now, next up is Judah. Yes, Dublin, the motherland. That's where we're starting. It's not where we're ending. But we are going to be starting in Dublin and going to London, then London to Frankfurt. And then after that, if I'm feeling very, very lucky, we might try and get an Innsbruck land. I would love to do Innsbruck. I'd love, I'd love to do the actual circle to land. Um... I've done it once, but I don't think I was following the actual approach. Isn't this interesting? So we are coming to land on a north-facing runway, but we're coming from the north. We're going to come in from the north, and we're going to swing around south and then come back up north. It's the most interesting approach. I don't, uh, not the most in interesting. I think that would probably be uh, Innsbruck. Or, Kaitak doesn't exist anymore, but if it did, Kaitak would definitely be one of those um, super interesting places to land. And I wish that my FMC actually had uh, navigation to it. But it doesn't, so we can't actually fly there. Uh, 
switching to my approach blade. So it's once we cross Peggy, we can then drop to 7,000. Go ahead and dial it down. We won't push it until after we get to Peggy. Do a flight to Edinburgh. Um, I don't know where... Oh no, I think I have done Edinburgh before. I think I think I flew from Edinburgh to um, Reykjavik. That was a while ago. What are you doing? Plane. Plane. Hold up, what are you doing? Why are you trying to turn at Elton and do a hold pattern? You're like doing this weird hold pattern thing. Oh wait. I'll tend to hug you. Oh, wait, no. That's because it's Huggy turn around to Elton. I bet it's because we couldn't drop 5,000 feet in 20 miles. Yeah, basically, that's exactly what I'm thinking. And you know what I think I'm going to do? Heck it. I think we're going to direct Elton. That's how we're going to solve this. Go ahead and turn on seat belts. You know what? We may wind up having to uh, throw in a uh, circle anyway. speed brake to help us keep our speed down. We definitely need to be down to 210 knots. Okay, we definitely need to insert a right and let's insert a hold here. <clears throat> we need to drop speed and we need to drop altitude. Oh, I should have I should have specifically looked at that area. <laughs> I just saw this hook pattern being correct and assumed. So we're past our arrival. Elton, 
We're gonna be at seven thousand, at or above seven thousand. Need to be at twenty at two hundred ten knots. That's really the issue we're at right now. Too fast. I didn't fully tell it to do the, uh, the thing. And so we are down low enough. We're under two, three, zero, so we're gonna flaps one. We're gonna hold it 210 knots. Or it's not going to hold at 210 knots. It's going to go all the way down to 200 because, I don't know. Re I'm going to go ahead and tell it to exit because we have gotten down to speed. We've gotten... Oh, we are continuing down. Okay, uh, speed checked, flaps two. Uh, we're under 10,000 feet, we're gonna turn landing lights on. So we're just going to turn around straight. We're going to hit the uh, the approach to Fidvu again. Well, it looks like it's already got us past Fidvu. Right now, let's go direct Fidvu. We're gonna descend. Oh my, it is continuing to lower my speed. We're gonna go flaps full. Plane, what are you doing? I would very much like to know. We haven't hit our decel. What are you what are you doing? So I'm gonna have to watch this plane a little more closely because it's very close to its stall speed. For some reason our throttle is still idle. Shh, it's doing my landing pattern. <laughs> Look, I don't need it to do your landing pattern. I need it to do my landing pattern. I need it to do the actual landing pattern. All right. Go ahead and turn on our landing system. We're not going to capture it until down here at Miser. You better get that throttle up. Go ahead and drop our gear. I know it's I know it's early guys I promise I do know it's early um, I do have reasons for doing it Let's see where are we intercepting so we'll be oh, 
200,000 or 210 at JC, which were definitely low. Um, Intercepting at 2600. All right, looks like we have tuned the ILS. We are going hack and slow. Jersey, which we have as GSON, that's where we're going to need to be at uh, 2,600 feet. And it looks like we're bang on for it. Perfect. All right. So let's get to our approach procedures. FCU speed manage, speed brake as required, not needed at the moment. Flaps one at 230 knots. We have already done that. FCU approach ILS tuned. We are uh, tuned, but we are, well, I suppose we can go ahead and arm the approach. <clears throat> uh, autopilot 1 and 2 both on, which I will do once we've made our last turns here onto Cooney. Because <clears throat> I do want to make sure I stay on the proper approach. should see right over here this way there's the airport we definitely have contact with the airport go ahead and arm autopilot 2 <clears throat> you need to keep descending it is descending very very slowly not sure why it's being that slow. All right. That's you. Altitude will be set go around after we are captured on the glide slope. Flaps two is already set. Below 200 knots. Landing gear is down. Ground spoilers arm. Auto brake is set as required to uh, auto brake low. Flaps 3 has already been set. Ecam all green. Flaps full. Uh, auto throttle check on. Nose wheel light set to taxi. Uh, landing lights are on. Runway turnoff is on. Alright, we are captured on the glide slope. And it's just going to bring us in on the localizer. At least I hope it is. <laughs> anyway, let's check all. Okay, that's all good, and we are ready for the landing. So this is the part where I can easily fuck it up. Uh, if there's going to be a time where we are going to die. This is going to be it. So we're going to... Our go-around is 4,000 feet. And we will uh, do a straight-out until 2,000. And then climbing left to 4,000. Then direct bowler. All right, let's go ahead and cancel the autopilot. And we need to descend. We're at 1,000 feet. Okay, 
right, just glancing at my instruments, but I am mostly keeping my eye on that runway. Are out. Hold the nose. Eighty knots, the reversers. No braking. All right, not a bad arrival. Right, so on rollout, let's go ahead and retract those speed brakes. Flaps zero. All right, and let's start heading towards I've realized now that I have made a mistake and that I do not have my chart open. I do know this airport fairly well. This is my local airport. Ground spoilers disarmed, landing lights retracted, engine mode set normal, flaps retracted, APU master on, APU start. We have flap open, APU start. Let's go ahead and hit the brake fans. Terrain on ND is off. Brake fan is on. All right, let's get back to the terminal. Alright, so where are we passing? Bravo 4. Bravo, Bravo 4. We need to go down to Lima. Then we'll take Lima into the ramp. So Lima is going to be... There's Lima. I'm just very, very confused. There's all. That should be our next one. That's Alpha 9? We'll just call it Mike. We'll call it Mike. I think we're good with that. Try and get those brakes down. Yeah, it looks like Mike becomes Lima. I don't know why. <laughs> but, welcome!
welcome everybody to Kansas City, Missouri. Um, it looks like our flight time today was about an hour and 33 minutes. We were scheduled for one hour, 47 minutes. So I think we're going to call that a win. Yeah, KCI Airport is amazing. I love the fact that, like, you're 20 feet from getting out. Like, really. You get into the terminal and you're right there. Also, I do not know where Frontier would park here at HE. Yeah, Pearson, you're a couple miles away. Like, <laughs> you better be ready to walk. Yeah, so I do not know where Frontier would park, so we're just going to park right here. I think we're at Terminal B. Yep. No, 38. I think we're at Bravo 38. Moving, keep moving. Just wanted to slow down. Almost. Perfect. Let's take a look at this from the external view. Oh, we are right on. All right. So, parking procedures, park brake pressure, check green. It looks okay. Uh, park brake on, anti-ice is off. APU bleed coming on. Uh, engine one and two master off. Runway turnoff lights off. Nose wheel lights off. Beacon off. Seat belts off. Elapsed time stop. Fuel pumps all off. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um. Transponder to standby. McDo's to dim. Perfect. And the brake fan can come off when we are ready for it to. First thing I need to do is to get in here and play summary flights shut down fuel is gonna be 3380 kilograms all right perfect now Go ahead and look at securing the aircraft. Looks like all of our temperatures are down under 300 uh, degrees, so we're going to turn off our brake fan. And securing the aircraft, we're going to park brake on, the gears off, external lights all off. Uh, APU bleed off, APU master off, uh, emergency exit lights off, no smoking off, battery one and two off. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Kansas City, Missouri. It looks like we are here just a little early. 
Hopefully that doesn't offend anybody. And that is our flight for today. Let's go ahead and close up our uh, aircraft and we can look at a couple of replays. Let's go to ground services and we are going to close all of these doors. Because let me tell you, there is nothing more frustrating than going ahead and loading up these replays and the entire time you see the doors on the aircraft are open. That is the last thing we want to see, so we give everything a minute to make sure everything is totally shut. Definitely looks like it is. There's our aft cargo door for... Okay. So let's go and... Flight. Uh, toggle replay mode. And then we're going to back the hell up. Looks like right about... Here would be a good place to start. So we are going to change our view to the runway, and that is not the correct runway. Ah, explain. Explain, can you explain to me why you can never manage to do this properly? We are landing over here. So I'm gonna need you to be like right here and still aimed at our aircraft. All right. So let's look at this approach. Right now we look fine. Seem to be a little far to the right. Trying to correct. Hey, how you doing, Dragon Wrath? I haven't seen you in a hot minute. Yeah, we got blown a little bit off course to the right. And then we need to run that back a little bit because... Uh, I was too busy trying to turn the camera. And there's our flare. It was a hard and late flare, I think. Living? Yeah, I know that feeling. I've been trying to live. Yeah, that's a late flare. That's why we hit so hard. Now, in fairness, um, I think that Airbus does tell you to try and land at about 160. If it's 300, which it was, uh, I'm going to be happy with that. Happy enough, anyway. Let's pause it right there, and then we'll see if they properly have the tower set up. Hey! They actually have the tower set up. Alright. Let's watch this approach from the tower. It'll probably look a little bit better there, because I won't be off, uh, off course as much. Because I'm just too close to the tower. How's your back doing, man? Last time I checked, you were having a rough time of it. Now, it's been a few years, but... Uh, still worry. Right over the threshold, perfect. Yeah, I think I didn't have enough flare. Not enough and too late. Should have seen about a five to seven degree flare. But as you can see, this is all the flare I got. Was That was maybe two or three degrees tops. So that's why I landed so hard. Not enough flare. But I did land with both wheels simultaneous, which is good because I was definitely rolled beforehand. Do I still play 14? Yes. I still play quite a bit of 14. Um... I'm probably doing... I, I've finally gotten Syl to the point where she is uh, 80 and everything. 
So all classes, all combat classes, all crafting classes, all gathering classes, totally maxed out. Um, now I'm not being quite so strenuous, but I'm I'm still working on. Uh... Oh, you got your surgery! Hell yeah! So is that? Are are you doing better with that now? I think the surgery went well. Okay, and that's where the nose wheel touched. That nose wheel touch was really good because um, I did not feel it at all. So you can see how I was rolled here, but then I managed to roll out and hit the, the uh, rear gear simultaneously. Yeah, how did uh, how how did the surgery go? Like, uh, did it did it go well? Are you doing a lot better now? Hey, what other fuse? You know what? I, I need a chase. Let's do that one. No longer the Walking Dead. Hell yeah! So you can stay up more now, and and I know that it was getting to the point where you couldn't even sit in a chair. Um, the last we were talking. So here's it lining us up for runway one. But yeah, like, if you're able to actually, like, be up and about and do things without being in extreme pain, that is definitely, that's, like, the ideal of how we always hope things would go, you know? But you had to fight tooth and nail for that. Um, you had to fight way too hard to get that surgery. That We all knew that you needed that surgery for years. They did a discectomy and cut out the flattened herniated, the, the filtered herniated discs. Okay, and then, so, the last we talked, they were, was it that they were talking about a fusion, or they had done a fusion? Okay, so here, you can kind of see I'm coming in an angle. Rupture. No fusion. Okay. They were just talking about it and then just and then didn't, or am I just totally remembering it wrong? Because it's been a while. So I think at this point I'm actually in control of the plane, and I think we're just drifting. Because I'm not able to get the rudder deflection. Okay, the fusion was the worst case scenario. Okay. I got you. Yeah, see, I think we had a crosswind and that's what's blowing me to the right. You can see me trying to roll a little bit to the left. Here's the harder deflection. Let's try and get back on center line. Let's see, when did I play? When I'm aiming back down to get back on the glide slope. Yeah, there's no flare there. That's just a little flare too late. And then our speed brakes are still up. You'll see me, I'll, I'll disarm them up here. I really should do it faster, but, um, so normally speed brakes is something that would be, yeah, there, there's where I did it. Um, normally speed brakes would be handled by the, per, by the pilot monitoring on landing. 
Um, like these, these, there's all these sort of things that I can't do as quickly as they do in an actual aircraft because I can't just pull the lever. I, I have to look down and pull the lever. Um, in an actual cockpit, I'd be able to just feel for it and yank that lever down. Um, or rather push it up in this case. Um, but I can't do that in the simulator. I have to actually target it in order to adjust it. Uh, I could assign it somewhere on my throttle, but everything on my throttle is already set to something. And I don't really have a place for disarm the brakes as much as I would love to. Um, and I'm doing really good at holding that center line. And I'm starting to drift off it a little bit here, but... And that's good. But yeah, this is what I've been doing in some of my spare time lately. Uh, the dock cut, out, cut into my vertebrae and created a path for the sciatic to hide, slide into it so it won't pinch anymore. Don't have the pinching, burning, stabbing pain anymore. But if I still, but if I still bend or stand too long, I feel muscle discomfort. Okay, yeah, if you stoop, stoop, bend, or stand. Is that, when you say bend, does that include, like, sitting? Like, is sitting and laying down both are comfortable enough? This is where I'm actually looking at my charts. I'm, I'm not actually looking at the uh, screen. Because I'm trying to figure out how to get to the terminal. <laughs> I love the fact that these actually look like they're not symmetrical. I do like that. Tolis, Tolis did a lot of work here. Like you can, you can even see. Yeah, you can see the 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 breaks through and everything. Like guys, it's fantastic. I love Tolis. So sitting is fine, same for laying down. Good, good, good. So, because that's what, I asked that a lot because that's what you were having the, the most complaints with that were really affecting your life beforehand was that you couldn't sit or stand or anything for very long. Like, laying down was the only thing that you could do. Um, or at least towards the end there. And uh, that was rough, man. I'm glad that you got that sorted. I'm glad they finally gave you the fucking surgery that they should have given you to begin with. But for some reason, they just wanted to dick you around. I... Uh, I don't want to get into to, to anything politics related, but... Man, this country needs to treat veterans better. Had the surgery January 2017. So you've been good for a while now. I just haven't heard from you in a while. Which is fair. It's not like I've been reaching out much myself. Uh. But yeah. Um, I'm glad that you finally got that, man. That, that was that's something I've been wondering for a long time. I just never really thought to ask. Uh, I always figured it would it would bother more than it. like I figured that if you had gotten the surgery then it would just be like oh yeah you, you didn't think to ask until now and then if you hadn't it would just be a reminder of how long you've been fighting for it you know workman's comp didn't cover the surgery had to go with your primary insurance god damn and so they made you pay what like 70% or, or they paid 70% something like that probably something stupid I came in on that. Perfect. Look at that. The one thing that I do complain about is because I don't have rudder pedals, I can't do toe brakes. So I can't 
determine how hard I want to brake. So it's full brakes or no brakes. That's why you'll see as I'm pulling in, I keep doing this full stop where it rocks the airplane. I really need to get some rudder, rudder pedals. I still think Workman's Comp definitely should have covered it. Um, they're insane not to. I don't know how they get away with it, but, you know, the United States will fuck everyone. Um, not even surgery was over 100000 I got left with $850 in copays, but I think my job just covered it because it's not even showing on my credit report. Holy shit! Wait, so they didn't cover... So, either your, your insurance covered 100%, or uh, whatever it didn't, your job covered, and all you were left with was eight hundred and fifty dollars in copays. Because I'll tell you, I'll tell you this: I paid more than that when I was in my my accident and tore up my eye. Like I I paid I want to say like two or three thousand out of pocket, and all I got from their insurance was like a thirty eight dollar check. A 34. I think it was 34. And that's what they thought my uh, my recurring erosion syndrome, which I still fight with, was worth. Um, but no, that's fantastic. To, to, to come out of back surgery with just $850 of, of co-pays, that's fantastic. Yeah, that accident was complete bullshit. Ooh. Man, they made me mad. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so that's us. Um, that's the whole flight. And uh, hopefully you guys have all enjoyed. Uh, Dragon, I know you're already following. Not to mention a lovely shot at just being blind in one eye. Because yeah, yeah, exactly. I have Discord info from the FC. I do not. Um, if it's still in the FC's um, uh, login message, I can get it. Because I do still have my, my Makote. Uh, that's in there. At least assuming that she hasn't been kicked. Uh, be a lot easier than typing it all out. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, um, yeah, if it's still in there, I can grab that out of the out of the game and and join there as soon as I'm done with dinner and everything. Um, but yeah, absolutely. And um, there's and and you can see my Discord there. Um, if if I do some for some reason forget, you can always grab that, come in and poke me and say, hey, uh, did you forget to do the thing? Because I forget to do the thing a lot. Um, that's one thing that hasn't changed about me over the years. I have not gotten any better at remembering anything, but I do try to do this. I'm, I'm doing this three times a week. Uh, Tuesdays I do flights, then, uh, Wednesdays and Fridays I'm doing, currently it's Trials of Mana, but I try to do, uh, old style RPGs, not necessarily always old. Um, you know, I've done cross code, but cross code has a very old style. Um. Uh, I'm still in there. Okay, cool. Yeah. So I'll be able to drop in there and grab the, the Discord information from there and join up and make sure that, that uh, we can still talk and everything. Uh, I apologize for not keeping up with that as best I could. Uh, I've just had a couple of a couple of rough years here, so um, you know, I'm getting I'm getting to where I need to be. At least that's the goal. But I am going to go ahead and end the stream here. Uh, I don't want to go too far past 7. Uh, we're, we're about to 7.30, and we had a fantastic flight. Uh, I had a lot of fun. We had a lot of people watching. I hope you guys have all enjoyed. Um, the link doesn't work. Uh, grab another one. Discord. 
fight people. In the wink. It, it to its fire never. Poppy button. Here, try this one. That should work, I just generated it. Which, weirdly, it's exactly the same as the one that I just used. Maybe it just needed to be refreshed? I don't know. It might be because you're on your phone? Maybe! Um, I don't know. Once I grab yours out of the game, then I'll, I'll message you with mine. Um, but if not, it's a rack attack. Um, a rack attack. Uh, there we go. That's my Discord specific username. So if I do forget, that way you don't lose me. Um, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and cut the stream here. Thank you guys so much for coming. If you did enjoy it, then uh, poke the follow button. If you want to say it with a little baritone in your voice, then uh, hit the sub button. That uh, All that is used to help the stream. So it's, it's not just for me, unless, of course, I can't live without it. I'm not going to, you know, not pay rent. But... Uh, if I get when if and when I get that I usually use it to improve the stream and to get better at doing this thing for you guys So any money that goes into that it's going back into you guys. It's going back to the community Thank you guys so much for being here, and I hope to see you tomorrow or Friday Maybe next Tuesday if all you're interested in the flight is is the flights um, Hopefully I'll make it fun next week is going to be Dublin to London Luton and I think after that, we are doing uh, London to uh, Frankfurt. I'll try to get Innsbruck sometime next month if I can. That's going to be a real fun uh, landing because it's a circle to land in the middle of a uh, in the middle of a, of a canyon. So you come within about 200 feet of the ground of the mountain. So that'll be fun. Uh, and I'll probably crash, but we'll see. So I'm going to cut it here. Thank you guys so much for being here. I will see you guys later. Have a great evening and enjoy yourselves. Take care and good night.